kung magagawa po tayo sa intramuros, madami din pong mga ganitong spaghetti wires. And if these wires damage the properties there, hindi po madaling mag-restore ng mga lugar na luma na at kung masulog halos, imposible na maibalik ito sa dati. Number five, it is an eyesore. As mentioned earlier, tourists who visit Intramuros see how these lines hamper the beautiful sights there. Ang sakit po sa mata ng mga spaghetti wires na ito. In Davao, they already installed their cables underground. Baka matagal na po ito, pinopropose the architect Palafox. What is stopping us from implementing this? Good afternoon, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Gusto po ihain sa inyo ngayong araw na ito ang spaghetti. Hindi po ito yung spaghetti na ikinakain natin sa handaan o yung kantang spaghetti. Sa halip, ito pong spaghetti na ito ay matuturing kong panganib at perwisyo sa ating mga kababayan. I present to you spaghetti wires and cables. My staff went around the metro to take photos of these entangled and voluminous wires and cables. And it was very easy to find them. Alam ko, pamilyar po tayong lahat sa mga ito. Ang sakit po sa mga mata. My attention was recently called during regarding the spaghetti wires when several complainants came to my program last Friday because they got into an accident due to some hanging wires along EDSA. Panorin po natin. Mr. President, dito na kable ng ano kawad po. Oh, kaya may ano ka sa dito? Po sir. Bandage. Kaya po yung time na yun sir, binitawan ko na po yung motor ko, hindi ko na po alam kung ano nangyari sa amin. Sa gitna po ng kalsada sir. Buti lang po yung mga ibang motorcycle rider na tumuloy po tumulo sa amin kasi kung may kasunod pong nangyari sa sa amin pagkatumba, baka na sagasana po kami noon. Pati si Ma'am. Opo. Ang ulo ko sa ma'am, ang kay mama. Tapos yung ipin ko. We already contacted the Philippine Global Communications Incorporated. Through their uh, rep customer service representative po, we informed po na mayroon pong ganong insidente nangyari and also we emailed the police report po. Ano pong uh, sagot nila, uh, Corporal? Ang uh, sabi po nung uh, nakausap natin na uh, si Mika po, ay uh, na-forward na daw po nila yung, uh, uh, yung uh, police report doon po sa kanilang legal. Kausapin ko yung ano, chairman ng MMD. Of course, responsable ng may-ari ng kable. Pero dapat bilang sila yung nag, namamahala niya sa mga kalye, sa EDSA, yung MMD dapat nakita nila na may mga nakabalanda na kable, tinawagan nila yung Philippine Global para ipaayos. Sir, okay. maidagdag ko lamang po. Uh, nung gabi po na yun, apat na sunod-sunod po yung nadisgrasya. Apat? Apat po. Maliban pa po sa kanila, may mga nauna po. Opo, na siya po yung isa sa mga biktima. Bali, 12 midnight po. Alas uh, 1.30 po ng umaga. Ah. At meron pa rin pong nabasagan po ng windshield. Mr. President, four incidents involving just that particular area in EDSA. And yet, kinalang pa po nila pumunta sa aking programa para magsumbong. Ito pong mga taga Philippine Global Communications Incorporated na nagmamayari ng mga kabling yan nung nalapitan po ng mga naberyan nila. Ano ang mga sinabi? Magsumitiraw ng pictures at video para ma-refer sa kanilang legal at pag-aaralan. Pagkatapos po noon, aming tinawagan ng MMDA ang sagot lang sa amin nang magaling na MMDA, hindi daw nila jurisdiction yung nangyari. Nawawang mga nila lang. Mga walang malay na naghanap buhay lang at namamalengke sana ay muntik pang mabawian ng buhay. At ito mga may kasalanang walang urgency at malasakit sa mga tao. Ibabato pa sa legal. At ang MMDA na sana ay ang sangay ng gobyerno na maaaring nakagawa ng paraan upang mapigilan ang mga aksidente sa pamagitan ng pagtawag ng atensyon nitong Philippine Global Communications ay umiiwas sa kanilang responsibilidad. Dahil sa pangyayaring ito, aking pong pinatingnan ang estado ng mga kable sa ating mga kapaligiran. 
Mr. President. Just last August 2023, dahil sa mga nag-ipon-ipon na kable sa mga poste ng kuryente sa Binondo, sa tabi mismo ng Binondo Church, apat na poste ang bumagsak dahil sa bigat. Nabagsakan po ang ilang mga sasakyan. Naputo ng kuryente at ibang telco services. Kasamang internet doon sa area na yun. Pagkatapos po, sinarang kalye upang maayos ang mga bumagsak na poste kaya nagdulot ng traffic. Mr. President, ito po mga spaghetti wires ang nagdudulot ng napakaraming problema para sa ating bayan. Number one, just like in the case that was brought to me, it is a risk to life and limb. It possess real danger to our citizens. Ito lang po is enough to make this matter a national concern. It could also be a cause of terrible traffic. Kapag ito po ang mga kable at mga poste ay bumagsak, ito po ay magdudulot ng matinding traffic. Number three, damage to property. Just like the one in Binondo, it fell on cars parked along the street. If these wires are not maintained well, it is known to cause fire as well. Number four, damage to heritage sites. Kung magagawi po tayo sa Intramuros, madami din po mga ganitong spaghetti wires. And if these wires damage the properties there, hindi po madaling mag-restore ng mga lugar na luma na at kung masulog halos, imposible na maibalik ito sa dati. Number five, it is an eyesore. As mentioned earlier, tourists who visit Intramuros see how these lines hamper the beautiful sights there. Ang sakit po sa mata ng mga spaghetti wires na ito. Number six, interrupted in electricity and telecommunications. Just like what happened in Binondo when it fell, businesses, including banks, lost their internet. What if hospitals are affected and they experience brownness for a long period of time, especially in the middle of a surgery? Mahirap po yung ganong klaseng sitwasyon. All these possible impending danger and negative effects could be prevented if people who are responsible would just stop looking the other way and pretend that these words do not exist. Mr. President, bakit nga ba nagkakaganito ang mga wires at kable natin? It seems that these wires are mostly from utility companies such as telecommunication, internet providers, and electricity distributors. These companies apply for permits to install these structures and attach these cables, but there seems to be nobody actively regulating them. Nobody is monitoring them in short. Once a wire is no longer in use, they shall leave it there. And new utility providers just keep on adding and adding and adding more wires. Some would give an excuse that they cannot just remove the useless and abandoned wires because hindi naman daw sa kanila yun. So nagmumukha pong tambakan ang mga poste natin na mga kable na nagkakabulbol at wala nang pakinabang. Tapos, minsan pa po, ginagawa pa nila yung storage facility para madali silang mag-ayos. May ilang nag-iwan ng mga rolyo ng kable para kung may ayusin, nandun agad, extra cables. Mr. President, who issues the permit for this construction and installation? We have the building officials issuing building permits. These are supposed to go through the city engineering office. But how come? It is as if after submitting the requirements, these companies have a free hand already in whatever they hang in these Poles. There should be a continuous monitoring so that the permits could be lifted when they are when they are not compliant. Ito pong Philippine Global Communications Incorporated ay dapat ma-review ang kanilang permit to operate. 
they are not doing their job properly. And who knows, ilang pang mga kable nila ang nagdudulot sa mga perwisyo sa tao. Mr. President, in the case that happened to the complainants that approached me, there is a clear lack of accountability on the telcos and the government regulating agencies. We have to determine whose liability this is. LGU ba? DPWH? Or the telcos, all electric distribution companies? There should be more national direction regarding these concerns. There are individuals' actions in some areas. For example, in Davao, they already installed the cables underground. Baka matagal na po ito, you know, propose the architect Palafox. What is stopping us from implementing this? And while this is pending, there are some LGUs like in Cebu and Valenzuela that did the clearing drive in their area of these cables. In passing, they have an ordinance holding telcos and electric companies liable for failure to clear these lines. Maybe we could explore these options so that these spaghetti wires could finally be resolved and no more life could be put at risk. I believe that the Committee on Public Works under the chairmanship of Senator Bong Ribilla would ably address this. And as chairman of the Committee on Energy, I will take the cudgels against the electric distribution companies. If there are adjustments that we need to make in our laws and put the responsibility on those businesses making use of these posts and cables, I know we can work on these together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. President.